Hey guys, welcome to a brand new project of mine. This time around, I'm bringing you Higurashi When They Cry. I first came across this title when I was looking for similar games to Doki Doki Literature Club, and my research led me to believe that this is actually the granddaddy of Doki Doki. Like, this is, if Doki Doki was inspired from any game, this is it. So, recently, the latest chapter of this game was released in English, so I figured, you know what? What better time to start this than now, in that case? And, in case you're watching this in current time, the first chapter of this game is divided into 8 chapters, and they are pretty long from what I understand. But, the way they set this up is, until there is a cure for COVID-19, until there's a vaccine or whatever, the first chapter is available for free on Steam. So, if you are interested in playing through a game of the same fucked up levels as Doki Doki Literature Club, then you might want to give it a whirl. Me? I actually don't know anything about this game, other than the fact that it's very long, and that it's, uh, <laughs> it's the OG of Doki Doki, basically. So we're going in blind. I have no idea what's about to happen, I have no idea what to expect, but I expect the worst considering what happened in Doki Doki, alright? That's the basis, that's the, that's, the, that's the disclaimer right there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start this long ass game, huh? Onikakushi, opening, Demon the Way chapter. Welcome to the world of Higurashi when they cry. The Onikakushi arc will be the opening, inviting you into this world. Sit back, relax, and enjoy life in Hinamizawa to the fullest. The difficulty for this chapter is extremely high, but I hope you will enjoy the reward. Please do not deplore yourself. Even if the world does not forgive you, I will forgive you. The same thing again. So please tell me, what will it take for you to forgive me? This story is a work of fiction. All the way back to 1983. If I was going to be ripped apart anyways, having my body ripped apart would have been far better. I trusted her. No, I still trust her. Even in this very moment, I trust her. But I'm starting to realize. I only wanted to trust her because I refused to accept the truth. She's a crazy bee! <laughs> It was as if I was trying to convince myself. In such a silly, sobbing voice. And those tears. Those tears making a mess of my face. That mechanical, repetitious sound finally stilled. And everything fell silent. Only the cry of the cicadas remained annoyingly loud. And yet, I felt as if I could still hear her voice. But that's not possible. She's no longer speaking. The only one crying is me. She never cried. Even when she repeated those words over and over, she never expressed any emotion because there were none to show. If she had no tears to shed for me, then I... I shouldn't need to shed any tears for her. Then why? This pain, my eyes getting moist! Why is this happening? I still want to believe. I hadn't been split apart. That's enough, right? Inside me, an inner voice whispered gently. My spirit had suffered enough. And countless times I wavered over whether I should throw the batter thing away. Except, I've stubbornly refused to do that, haven't I? I would feel better if I just threw it away. Even knowing that, I chose to believe, didn't I? Only I can understand that painful struggle and appreciate it. Hey, me? I tried more than enough. I'll acknowledge that much. So, isn't it alright to just take the easy way out? Besides, I'm not throwing it away. I'm leaving it behind, with her. 
like flowers by a grave. Now then, calm your nerves. Even though you can't feel your right arm, just lift it up. And with every swing, forget a little more. That kindness made me happy. That adorable smile brought me joy. I liked petting your head. I loved how demure you were. Zen, help me out. <laughs> because this will be the last time. Because when I swing this down, I'll forget. This is my first and last bouquet for you. Perhaps I really did love you. Interesting intro. Somebody has been apologizing for a while now. I wonder what she's apologizing for. Excuse me? Why is my enter not working? Oh, it's not. Oh, I hate you. So how do I actually... Wait, I gotta look this up. Menu. Do we have controls? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and save. Yeet. Yeah. Go back. I said menu. I said, I said. What? What the fuck does NVL and ADV stand for? Only for Nintendo Switch sprites? What? I have no idea what the fuck all of this is. Ah. Uh, okay. I guess we're keeping the mouse on the screen for now. It felt wrong to eavesdrop, so I tried to ignore it. It had been a while since I last went to the city. I only returned to attend the funeral of a relative. 
Even though I had lived there until last month, I found the bustle of the city to be overwhelming. Those skyscrapers and the multi-lane roads. The melodious cacophony of the crosswalk. Whoa, look at me sounding all eloquent thanks to a visual novel, dude. Even the campaign speeches blaring in front of the station felt nostalgic. The place where I live now isn't nearly as lively. There is only the chirping of locusts and the babbling of brooks. And the cry of the higurashi, the evening cicadas. Rather than making me feel lonely, that quietness had begun to instill a sense of serenity. There is nothing where I'm living now. I don't just mean there aren't any burger joints, there aren't even any vending machines, but how are you gonna refill your SP, fam? No music stores, no restaurants, no arcades, and an ice cream parlor? Pfft, no chance. The nearest town has some stuff like that, yeah, but it's an hour away by bike. But come to think of it, it wasn't really a big deal. There were music stores and arcades and ice cream parlors where I used to live, but it wasn't like I ever hung out at any of them. I had lived in the city for 10 years and never once been to an ice cream parlor. I should have gone at least once. It's only now that I'm starting to regret that a little bit. Somebody's still apologizing. Who is she apologizing to? She's apologized so much, just forgive her already! There is no reason anyone should ever need to apologize so much. I start to feel a bit annoyed at whoever was refusing to forgive her. No matter how bad the mistake, there is nothing that can't be forgiven. There is no such thing as an irreparable mistake. You just need to be more careful next time. She's still apologizing even now! Then, has she really done something that can't be fixed? I have no idea what she's done, but if it can't be fixed, then that's all the more reason to forgive her! No matter how much she apologizes, nothing will change! But even so, she keeps apologizing in such a heartbreaking voice. Hey, you! The one she's apologizing to! Why the fuck don't you just go ahead and forgive her, huh? She's apologizing in such a pathetic voice. Heichi, soro soro tsukuzo. Welcome, voice. Okinasai. <laughs> I was finally roused from my nap by my father's prodding. Father, what are you doing? What does prodding mean? It seemed the train had reached its final stop. We had spent hours riding everything from the bullet train to the local routes. It was hard to believe that the landscape beyond the window in the city I was in half a day ago were in the same country. No, that they were even from the same era. From there, we had taken a car deeper into the mountains. Past where the dense forest encroaching on the mountain road suddenly opened up. It's a cozy little place. A little bit of river running here, huh? There, where I live now, Hinamizawa. I gotta, I, I, I can't, it's, it's irking me that the fucking mouse is there. Let's try some keys, alright? Let's try some keys. Let's go ahead and uh, save our game again. Like right there, I wonder what she's apologizing for, I have no fucking idea, mate. Okay, so. Even though we were approaching summer, the morning air still had a frigid bite. Let's try X. Let's try Z. Let's try C. Let's try Enter again. Let's try V. A. Hey yeah! Although in exchange you could feel Hey yeah! Uh, I thought I think A is for auto. <laughs> Fuck! 
Pac-Man! Uh, what did it say? Yeah. Ah! Ah, uh, what did you say? Although in exchange you could fill up your lungs with crisp, clean air, vital information, mate. Fuck, the mouse is still. I, I, I guess, I guess, the mouse is still. Uh, control? No, I think that's gonna skip, doesn't it? Flipping open the window, I was greeted with a verdant expanse. Nothing but trees up in this motherfucker. The neighboring house was far away on the other side. So I was probably the only one enjoying that view and that air. I filled my lungs with another deep breath. Since I started living in Hinamizawa, I learned that even air has its own taste. I quickly finished getting ready for school and headed downstairs for breakfast. My mother was the only one there. My father was nowhere to be seen. He was probably up working until early morning. Dad had a rather unconventional job as a painter. IN THE MIDDLE OF THE NIGHT! It's such a laid-back profession. Get up when you want, sleep when you want, and work when you want. I was so jealous of that easygoing lifestyle. I even wrote for school that I want to be a painter when I grew up. Dad was ecstatic about that. It was just because it looked easy. I would never tell him that, though. Mom laid breakfast out on the table. Seaweed, pickled vegetables, raw egg, and grilled salmon. Ma, can you cook this fucking egg? At least boil the bitch, please! My mom was such a good cook. It's raw, mate! It was scary. A perfect, immaculate, ideal breakfast. Unlike my dad! who didn't even know the meaning of the word schedule, my mom never squandered any time or effort. She hummed a little tune as she brought over the miso soup. It seemed like she was in such a good mood today. I thought I was being cute. Caught me in the middle of taking a sip of my water. Responding with a wise crack after being praised for being good. For breakfast, Mama! Yamamori. First, I savored the steaming hot rice with the seaweed. After that, I covered it with the egg. Between the bites of rice, I enjoyed the crunch of the pickles. Not bad at all, Mama! You done outdone yourself again! Excellent, as usual, or should I say excellent? Watching me clean my plate, it's a bowl. Mom gave me a warm smile. I need sustenance. I was not a morning person when we lived in the city. I slept right until the last minute before school and rarely ate breakfast. Boycotting the breakfast mom made each morning, that was probably the only way I could protest for being forced to attend cram school. I guess that's what you would call my rebellious faith. I was a wild one, folks. I wouldn't so much as look at the breakfast she woke up early every day to make. That was weird. If I could go back in time, I would slap myself silly. Mindful of the time, Mom rushed me along with a wide grin. Mom seemed to really enjoy the fact that her son was going to school with a girl. Rena is one of my classmates. She really loves looking after people, coming to meet me every day without fail. Oh, I'm getting Sayori vibes already. The way I looked at it, a guy my age walking to school with a girl was just lame. But, well, keeping a classmate waiting for me every day wouldn't be very considerate, you know? Seriously though, how long does Rena wait there for me every morning? Taking one last gulp of miso soup, I raced for the door. Come to think of it, those pickles weren't store-bought, were they? If I had known that, I would have savored them a bit more. How, bitch? Ayo. Her cheerful greeting was as fresh as the morning itself. Look at this cheery fuck! How are you so positive? It's morning, mate! You just ate a raw egg on rice!
She's so conscientious and such a good person. Don't get away to cook. Look, now you gotta spend like two, three days to fix her social link. It's more than that. I get it on me. Suck, suck, away to cook. Kitty, kitty, away to cook. Do you want to be a little Rena had a slightly troubled look on her face. Toying with her was rather fun because of quickly her mood changed. With those words, Rena seemed to relax. Her face flushed bright red. Ah, shut the fuck up. Let's go to school. Rena ga kuru made zutto matteru. Itsu made mo. Thanks for the pickles, by the way. Rena turned bright, steam rising from her head as her brain short-circuited. She's especially weak to this sort of talk. It's quite rare to find someone this fun to teach. For any romance novels or novels in general? From that response, I gather she was interested in them but was too embarrassed to actually buy one. I couldn't imagine what would happen if she did read one. But lucky for you, Rena, your birthday is probably coming up, so I got a book for you. About 50 shades of what? She probably turned red and passed the fuck out. So, so. Oh, 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 they weren't that salty, not as salty as me. Actually, they had a pretty light flavor to them. It would have been fine to just be honest and say they were good, but apparently, I couldn't be that forthright. Her attitude completely changed as she began to panic frantically. What's up with the 21 questions, Keiichi? Why you got three eyes in your fucking name? See how it feels to be asked questions like that? Because you put sugar in it! Huh? 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 Guys who take pleasure in this kind of thing are probably the worst. Guys like me. Rena nervously opened and closed her mouth over and over, trying to muster a response. Rena, but... Good. Huh? Last time, it was a good time. Her face went bright red again. She was completely spacing out. Compliments on my fucking pickles? Now I can die happy. It was truly a lot of fun to tease her. I pray that Rena never gets taken advantage of by some lowlife like me. Keep at it, Rena. I will train you until you can handle it like the average person. Or so I decided for myself. Easy there. Fucking weirdo. Seeing as she would just keep spacing out otherwise, I called Rena back to reality so we could make a way to school. This strange, easily flustered girl is Rena Ryugu. <laughs> I've only known her for about a month, but I've come to realize it's not just her name that's strange. I'm strange. Coming up to the next rendezvous point, we saw another person waiting for us. Noticing us, she waved. In sharp contrast to the diligent Rena, this one marches to the beat of her own drum. She is Mion Sonozaki. For what it's worth, she's our senior and head of the class. Good one, man. 
Mion's gaze started at my chest and then dropped straight down, focusing on the point between my legs. How old are y'all, everyone? Hey, hey! So she was saying it was my crotch that was cuter back then. What is this game? Before you ask, just to be clear, I've never actually tried to show it to her. What? Why would I ask? Voice actor, where did you fuck off to, man? You can't leave this conversation. If I gotta endure it, you gotta be here too. I've grown quite splendidly. The fuck? You would be surprised. Voice actors! <laughs> I don't wanna read this shit! Not only is he bigger, but he has a little mustache now. Star emoji. The fuck? Being so engorged. Okay, I don't care how old y'all motherfuckers are. Y'all ain't supposed to... I'm not supposed to know words like engorged. With energy every morning is quite a problem though. I will introduce you next time, so be sure to greet him properly. What are we talking about? <laughs> don't say next time. Right now is just fine. How about letting the little guy get a breath of fresh air? Rena, you, you probably spaced the fuck out like... You're not even in this Milky Way, fam. I don't think I've ever heard anyone... I don't think I've ever heard talk so dirty you could smell it fouling up the morning air before. Mion sure does act like an old man sometimes. Gotcha. What did you get? Time for the big reveal. Nope. As my hand reached for my fly... Rena began to ramble in a near panic. Piggles, piggles, piggles! <laughs> Welcome back, voice actors. Miss you. <laughs> Pickles. Red-faced and flustered, Rena tried to play dumb, but it was obvious she knows exactly what the fuck we were talking about. Pickles. <laughs> the pickles were good. Mian switched gears, dropping the dirty talk and changing the topic to something more befitting the pleasant morning. The pickle? Chit,ちっち。おもちゃ屋とホビーショップは全然違うよ。特に洋物、こっちじゃなかなか手に入らないからね。みーちゃんまたゲームの話？みーちゃん nodded proudly as Rena giggled. そう、ケイちゃんに洋芸のカタログを持ってきてもらいたかったんだけどね。Westport was short for Western Imported Games. Using that abbreviation did make it sound pretty geeky, though. そんなのまた通販で取り寄せりゃいいじゃねえか。yeah, but it will take like three months, won't it? Mian is a board and card game enthusiast, and I hear she's collected quite a lot of different ones. According to Rena, Mian's room is kind of a museum for domestic and foreign games. いいよ。ケイちゃんさえ良ければね。でもうちらのレベルは高いよ。上等じゃねえか。俺だって遊び100番遅れを取るつもりはないぜ。はあ。じゃあ今度はケイチ君も仲間に加わるのかな。かな。
The music reminds me of the Chocobo tune a little bit. Hinamizawa was really a small village. Not only was there only one school, but there was only one class. Wow, do we really need a whole building for this? That class encompasses all different grades and ages. There were about 30 students at different levels and they all study in the same class. I'm told long ago there used to be a bigger school building and they had all actual separate classes. However, it seems something happened in Corpse Party that made it become a single class and now it stayed that way out of tradition. I was shocked at first, but humans adapt pretty quickly. I've already gotten quite used to it. The sound of children playing started right from the morning. With such a lively mood, it felt more like a kindergarten than a proper school. Not that it was a bad thing. Mian, who had been walking in front of us up until then, suddenly let me take the lead. Right in front of the classroom door. So I was meant to slide the door open and enter the room first. Heh. <laughs> Too bad. I wasn't gonna fall for that again. Mion chuckled with a haughty smirk on her face. Slide the door up and see what pops off, Rena. Her name was Toko Hojo. From Final Fantasy VII? She was a disrespectful, impudent, bossy kid. The way she talks was annoying, but it would be immature to get worked up over just that. The real problem was this. Saw it coming a mile away, mate. No worries. A haughty... How are you... Why is everybody laughing in a fucking haughty way, mate? What is that? I've never even heard of that term before this game. Game. Unless it's a trap within a trap, I'm going back home to enjoy my pickles. Fuck y'all. After falling for such intricate traps since the day I transferred, I no longer let my guard down. Satoko liked to combine a variety of traps. Traps that were simply there to bait you into the main one. Traps that relentlessly kept coming at you like a sadistic Rube Goldberg machine. The list fucking goes on. As well as being clever, they almost never misfire. 60% of the time they work 100%. When you least expect it, she strikes. No escape, no time to relax. Breathing? Forget about it. I took a pretty heavy hit from a blackboard eraser loaded with rocks on my first day. That's what Satoko was after. Ha! I got her, I'll take it to the face! She won't expect that making me focus my attention upward, so I lifted my hand to the door. So as I lifted my hand up to the door, there were thumbtacks stuck to the sliding door handle with tape. A frightening trap. A potent and terrifying trap. Concealed by using the blackboard eraser? <laughs> Assured of my victory, I threw the door open and stepped into the room. I felt something strange at my ankle. It was similar to the sensation of a jump rope catching onto my leg. By the time I realized she had me, hook, line and sinker, it was already too late. I began to fall in almost a picturesque manner. Instinctively reacting to Mion's shrill warning, I twisted my body mid-air before I landed on the floor. Last hour was a question? An ink stone filled to the brim was placed right where I would have landed. I shuddered, imagining the situation had I landed square on it. Ah, 
うございます、ケイチさん。朝からにぎやかですわね。Look at this fucking devil spawn! Still sprawled in an awkward position, I was greeted by a mocking voice. It's a damn to special in a trap work in a tazareka, Satoko. A taxi no no go to a walk or in a semono. A sakara tweet a masewane. Timmy, I did it. It seemed I had inadvertently sprained my back a little when I landed. Better than landing on that ink stone. A small hand gently rubbed my head. I isn't that uh What's her name? A bay from Doki Doki Yuri? Is this her? Kate no Itai no Itai no Tonde Kedes. That's definitely not her. She wanted all the pain in the world though. The small dainty hand continued to gently stroke my head. I thought about asking how rubbing my head would help my back, but I didn't. It's not so much about what you actually do, it's the thought that counts. Rika-chan greeted each of us with an adorable little bow. It was infectious. Rena, Mion, and I all bowed back. Rika-chan was a good girl. Compared to Sato, I was a good girl. I glared over in her direction. Sato was whistling while rather deliberately trying to avoid eye contact. Sato was a good girl. I was a good girl. いい子はこんな凶悪な罠は仕掛けないぞ言いがかりでございますわ何の証拠があってうわぁ I picked up Satoko by the back of her collar What? She looks like a misbehaved cat when I do this But a cat wouldn't be setting traps She is much harder to deal with ごめんなさいって言ってみな言わないなら My index finger on my thumb, letting it tremble as I brought it closer to Satoko's forehead. I'll touch you with my thumb on your fucking forehead, bitch. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not though. It took a little bit of being a smoky type. Then you're crying at a water. Yeah, I learned this from Jackie Chan, fam. A small hand tugged at the back of my shirt. Keiichi was two weeks off, so I was sad. I was sad. Snitch. Rika-chan really is just so. How could I do anything more after being told that? I gently released my grip on Satoko, who at this point was on the verge of tears. She still had her eyes clamped shut as she braced herself for the forehead flick. Rika gently petted the head of her prankster friend. You would never guess the two of them are the same age. Actually, that was my first guess. I think Satoko could learn a thing or a million from Rika chan. Wait a minute! As she observed the scene, Rena's expression grew ecstatic as she began to swoon. <sighs> What happened with your eyes? Why is that? Rena kept the cutesy face even as Outrage's idea spewed from her mouth. According to Mion, Rena is ridiculously weak to cute things and always tries to take them home. Estelle? Object or person? 
じゃあ見てるだけ見てるだけだよそれならいいよねよねレナ swooned over Satoko's crying form What? If a girl ever goes missing in Hinamizawa I would be forced to turn Rena into the authorities Forgive me Rena Your pickles aren't worth、uh, keeping you on the loose I'll be sure to bring you care packages when they put you away. Sensei, Kitayo! Hayak, Katazukeru! Satoko, Suzuri, Anta, no desho? Just from me on a single statement, the entire mood of the room shifted back to normal. The inkstone was bad, yeah, but the thumb thacks stuck to the door handle were an even bigger problem. I pulled the tape off carefully, making sure not to skewer myself. Even though Satoko was the one who set it up, everyone had to pick up after her. By the time the teacher entered the room, the bed lamp from before had been neatly tidied up. <laughs> Mion gave out the morning commands. Fucking mouse inching closer to the center of the screen. It's difficult being the teacher for all these different grades in one classroom. She has to teach something different to each one. But naturally, she ends up spending all her time with the younger kids. Ren and Mion, being the highest grade in the class, end up mostly doing self study. They even end up helping teach the younger kids, so it seems like they can never get to their own study. They're actually way behind where my studies have progressed to. As a result, I'm pretty much taking over for the teacher and helping Ren and Mion with their studies. Oh, you know, I do what I do when I do it, goddammit. Rena took a breather after finishing highlighting an important section. That's not what it's supposed to do. In contrast, this person over here is quite a dad about things. <laughs> For once, isn't she supposed to be in a higher grade than me? Mion, sa, hitogoto ja naizo. Shinken ni yan naito mazui ze. Konna level ja. Betu ni shingakko mezasu wake demo naishi. Juken ni hitsuyo na soko soko ga dekite liya jubun jubun. Her staunch defiance was really something fucking else. This was a different type of relax than somebody who already knew what was going to be on the entrance exams. Mito, A puff of smoke shaped like a halo popped out of Rena's head. Exactly what kind of private lesson is she fantasizing about that's making her turn so red? The one that you were insinuating, bitch. I would like to hear the play by play of that one next time. While Mion was flipping through her vocabulary flashcards, she threw out a casual question. So, Study equals entrance exams. Having that basic law of the universe so easily overturned sent me into a state of shock. So, Kamone, Skin the Furio to Sanaka Naranai Hodo, Stomoinish. Dare the Moshinga could get on a saw. So, Nani Garigari to Yarukoto Monajana? Ma, so dagado. The more Ipanjo Skido near Dekta Honga. Oji san was so na mudana benkyo ni jikan o kakeri risa. Kono Shishunki no Kitona jikan o. It was too profound of a statement to simply laugh off. 
But since it was Mion, it probably didn't actually have that deep of a meaning. In place of a chime, the sound of the principal waving a handbell drifted through the classroom. In a completely 180 from her unmotivated state, Mion gave the commands that signaled the end of the morning period. Okay, and with that, I do believe we're gonna call it an episode because who knows what kind of shenanigans we're gonna get into during lunch. Not much, so this seemed like the most natural breaking point for the first episode of Higurashi when they cry. It's been your boy, Kyogre Gaming. I hope you enjoyed this one, man. I'm out of here and I'll see you guys next time. You know what I'm saying? Out of here. Love y'all. Deuces.